Bernie Sanders surrogate and national campaign co-chair Nina Turner got into a little bit of a fight uh, on the MSNBC set when she went after Mike Bloomberg as an oligarch. Take a look. Point. Do you think Mike Bloomberg is an oligarch? You, you, Come on. He, he is. Okay. I mean, he's not. He skipped Iowa. Iowans should be okay. insulted. Not going to New Hampshire, buying his way into this right. race, period. The DNC changed his rules. They didn't change it for Senator Harris. They wouldn't change it for Senator Booker. They didn't change it for right. Secretary Castro. They changed Did he it for buy the his way into money. the debates? Absolutely he did. And it is a stain on democracy. But back to your point. Money can buy you, you know, it, it can't buy you little. Buy you it, love? It can get you some likes, though. It can get you a whole yeah. lot of likes. But the way that Senator Bernie Sanders is going to win this election is by building a grassroots movement. And that is exactly starting what tonight. You're going to win tonight? Starting tonight. All right. I, I love Nina Turner. So she's absolutely fantastic. She's not afraid to call it what it is. He's buying his way onto the debate stage and prevented people of color from being involved in the debate stage. So if you actually care about representation and representation of different ideas, well, then you should be pretty angry at this rule change that allows a billionaire to force his way into the debate stage. And that's, by the way, after uh, reaching these higher poll numbers from blanketing the area with ads, blanketing, you cannot swing a stick without hitting a Michael Bloomberg ad. <laughs> a terrible analogy, but you get what I mean, right? You can't do anything. So now, uh, look, I love... By the way, I love how Chris Matthews is literally shocked and chagrined, right, at the idea. Like, are you calling Michael Bloomberg an oligarch? Yeah. Y yeah, she is. She's right, too. Uh, now, the only person, uh, the other person uh, that is shocked and chagrined here is actually Dr. Jason Johnson, uh, who is an MSNBC contributor and somebody who uh, is not exactly a fan of Bernie Sanders or his supporters. Uh, I'm actually currently blocked on Twitter for an unknown reason. Uh, now, he weighed in on this. Take a look. It, calling Mike Bloomberg an oligarch has implications in this country that I think are unfair and unreasonable. I disagree with a lot of things Mike Bloomberg has done as a mayor. But oligarchy, in, in, in our particular terminology, it makes you think of some rich person who got their money off of oil in Russia, who's taking advantage of a broken and dysfunctional system. Mike Bloomberg is just a rich guy. America is full of rich guys. And just because you're rich doesn't mean that you're an oligarch who abuses his power. The power that Mike Bloomberg got access to was given to him by the voters of New York. So I think using that common term, fine. It's great in the Iowa caucuses and the Bernie, you know, the supporters are going to love that sort of thing, but it ain't the kind of language that you should be using. I think it's dismissive. I think it's unfair. And it's the kind of thing that blows up in your face if you become the nominee and you have to work with Mike Bloomberg three or four months from now. And that's the issue that Sanders people never seem to want to remember. Wait, wait. Why would why would Bernie Sanders have to work with Michael Bloomberg three to four months down the line if he wins the nomination? What 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 are you what are you talking about? So I don't quite understand that. Uh, but look, this is this is language policing, right? You better not say oligarch because that has certain connotations going back to the Russians. Can't say that. Cannot call him a Russian. No, no. Only we can call Sanders and his supporters Russians. Mm. But look, it's 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 ridiculous, right? Because let's look into what an oligarchy is. So let me get to the actual definition of oligarchy. Oligarchy is a form of power structure in which power rests with a small number of people. These people may be distinguished by nobility, wealth, education, or corporate, religious, political, or military control. So now, is the United States an oligarchy? I would say yes. <laughs> uh, and so right now, you have a small group of people with lots and lots of money that have political, massive political influence over policy. And see, I can prove this because you have a study going back uh, earlier, what, last decade, okay? Uh, so this is 2012, 2013. Uh, this comes out. This is uh, done by political scientists Martin Gillens at Princeton and Benjamin Page of Northwestern University. Now, they looked at basically uh, two groups, uh, rich people versus everybody else, right? 
and they looked at how the government responds to the needs of those different groups. Uh, and that what they found is that the United States is an oligarchy where economic elites and organized interest groups play a substantial part in affecting public policy. So if you are rich or if you are in a special interest group, then generally our politicians tend to listen to them far more often than regular people when it comes to policy. In fact, the general public, according to the study, has little or no independent influence on policy. It is statistically insignificant. Now, if that does not scream oligarchy, I don't know what does. <laughs> it is the minority, in this case, wealthy people, wealthy donors, the donor class, that influence our politicians, who are also incredibly wealthy and entrenched in a system of money and politics that rule the majority. The only way that poor people, regular people, working people, get their policy positions met is if a special interest or a wealthy interest also agrees with that. So that's why we generally can't do anything when it comes to economics or healthcare, right? And so, I mean, that's generally what an oligarchy is. It's the definition. And Michael Bloomberg is incredibly wealthy. He is literally self-funding his entire campaign with his $60 billion fortune. And so, look, I hate to break it to Jason Johnson, but you're wrong. She, he, he is an oligarch. So, and besides, even under his interpretation, sands the oil money. And I love how he has to be specific, right? Well, I mean, in, in, you know, in, in, in my point of view, the way that I understand oligarchy is that you have to be a rich Russian in oil in order to be called an oligarch. Well, I just showed you the definition, the dictionary definition of oligarch. I'm sorry that it means a different word to you, but in reality, in the actual definition of the word, it means something else. It means that people like Bloomberg are oligarchs. Now, is that used as a pejorative today? Sure. You, I guess you can say, you could say that it is in the, in the case of Bernie Sanders supporters and people who actually enjoy democracy. So is she using it as a pejorative? I suppose so. I'll agree with that, right? Uh, but it doesn't make it any less true. I mean, again, taking advantage of a broken political system is exactly what many wealthy, wealthy Americans do in our system of money and politics. I mean, who do you think broke it in the first place? You had Ronald Reagan. Uh, you had conservative majority in the Supreme Court. Uh, you had these two decisions, Buckley Vallejo uh, and Bilotti versus First Bank, right? That basically set up the system where money is considered political speech and that corporations are people who then can give unlimited political speech to politicians. They set up the system that allowed the flood of money into our political system that allowed super PACs, bundlers, billionaire donors at all to uh, dominate our politics. Not only that, but it brought us people like Donald Trump. Trump was 30, 40 years in the making. Why? It's because he's a fake populist. You set up a situation where the establishment has so much power and so much influence and the voices of regular everyday working people are silenced and people are being crushed with uh, in enormous amounts of debt, student loan debt, mortgage debt, uh, because you know there's not enough wages to go around so that people keep having to borrow borrow money in order to afford actual living, right? Uh, well, you're going to set up a system where these people are feeling disempowered and they're going to turn to a dem demagogue or are more likely to turn to a demagogue like Donald Trump who says, well, your problems are the black people, your problems are the Mexicans, your problems are the Muslims. Don't worry, I can fix your problems. That's fake populism. That kind of system sets up fake populists. All right. Uh, but of course, if you call, uh, you know, people who perpetuate that system, people like Mike Bloomberg, uh, oligarchs, well, that's just not fair. That is an unfair implication and also might even be slightly anti-Semitic. And that's another thing that I thought about. So, you know, 
look, uh, Michael Bloomberg, he's Jewish, right? So if you call him an oligarch, well, that's got the negative, uh, you know, uh, inclination or it's got the negative association as well with, oh, look, you're, you're being super anti-Semitic by pointing out that he is using his power to literally buy his way into election. How dare you? How dare you? And so believe me, they're going to use that. Uh, they're going to use that anti-Semitic argument as well. Uh, but again, it has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that he is using his wealth and power to buy his way into the system and push out other people, to push out working class, uh, you know, people that represent the working class and also people of color. And so now, I mean, who buys their way into elections? Oligarchs. So now we get to one more video here, which I think is uh, extremely fun. They get into a little bit of a debate, Nina Turner and Dr. Jason Johnson, and it is awesome. You know, it's just ironic to me that somebody would defend the wealthiest people in this country over the working people of this country. We need real campaign finance reform to the extent that a mayor Bloomberg can totally finance his campaign. He doesn't have to go out to the people. He doesn't have to build a movement. He doesn't have to talk to people. He can buy his way. It is the same attitude that the elites, maybe uh, Jason likes the word elite over oligarch, but it's the same attitude that the elites had in 1930 against FDR. Nina, you work for a candidate Jason? who's part of the one percent. I have no problem with criticizing the system. The system that allows Mike Bloomberg to make all the money that he makes, the system that allows him to buy what he wants to buy, the system that allows him to buy himself into the administration and buy himself into the debates is a problem. But to call him an oligarch, I think, is a misnomer in this environment. And again, you're working for somebody who's part of the one percent. Do you call him an oligarch? No, you don't. But at the end of the day, the enemy of this country, the enemy of the poor, is not just everybody who happens to be rich. It is a capitalistic system that abuses people. And if you want to speak about that, that's fine. But if you want to name call people, that's not going to help Bernie if he becomes a nominee and he's going to need Who's Mike Bloomberg's calling? money. I'm not name calling anywhere. If he's going anybody. to need Mike Bloomberg's I'm money the down the road. It's this is all I'm that talking you're about. I'm not, I'm not defending rich people. I'm not defending rich people. I know this you works on Twitter him. because that's how you guys operate. You, you when it comes to actual campaign politics, it makes sense to actually describe people for the positions that they have. Is this about a word? Is this about a word, Jason? Is this about uh, a word? No, it's not just about a word. It's, it's about, about word. the implications of it. And it's about criticizing the system versus criticizing individuals. Like I said, I wouldn't call Bernie Sanders an elite? oligarch and he happens to be part of the 1%. I would say he's somebody who's but wealthy, you know but who's what? dedicated himself to trying to uplift people his who are He just got That's there at the age the of 78 issue. years old. Okay, so Jason Johnson basically made the argument right there uh, that you shouldn't use that word. You can't use the word oligarch when explain uh, while you know uh, talking about Michael Bloomberg. Can't do that. Now, if you want to talk about the system, and by the way, he he does make some some pretty good points, right? Uh, about how there is a system uh, that is messed up, right? The problem is, who do you think perpetuates that system? Who do you think messes up that system? <laughs> it's the people with the money. It's the people that are literally buying their way into the debates uh, and, and other, you know, and other ways that they influence elections. And so, look, that that is that is the, the, the large problem here. Uh, but then there's the, the and, and look, you know, you can have a, a good argument about that, a good discussion. But notice what he does as well. Oh, Bernie's part of the one percent. Isn't he an oligarch? Oh, really? Uh, well, look, that's kind of a weak sauce argument, right? Because oligarchs use their money to uh, maintain power. Now, look, he says later on, of course, when he's doing the crosstalk with Nina Turner, he's like, well, look, Bernie Sanders, you wouldn't call him an oligarch because he actually is using his money to try to uplift people, right? To be fair, right? And so he's pointing that out. But at the same time, well, then you wouldn't call him an oligarch. But what is Michael Bloomberg doing? I don't think he's trying to lift other people up. No, he's trying to become president himself so that, I believe, so he can try to take down Bernie Sanders. And so that's the big problem here. Uh, Michael Bloomberg literally wants to stop Bernie Sanders from becoming president. And he wants to protect his tax cuts. That's what this is about. He wants to protect tax cuts. He does not want to be taxed more for his money. 
But but Jeff, you, you don't understand. Michael Bloomberg gives a lot of money to charity. And charity's a tax write-off. <laughs> Literally, you get you pay less taxes when you give more money to charity. And then, of course, it helps your PR. But Michael Bloomberg has a lot of problems. He used to be an independent. He used to be a Republican uh, and have some very conservative policies. When he was mayor of New York, he didn't help homelessness. Um, stop and frisk was an absolute disaster. He's got an awful record, abysmal record. And so, you know, I don't think, I don't look, I don't think uh, word policing is going to help uh, in this case. A and so I, I just find like a, just really strange hill to die on. Uh, Jason Johnson had picked. So I don't know. Uh, but I do want to go uh, to Nina Turner, right? Who, by the way, is always amazing. And I want to give her credit because for one, putting up with this ridiculous word policing, right? I mean, it, at some point, like he's talking over her and whatever. It's like, and she's just trying to make her point, right? And she's not going to use a new word just because somebody like Jason Johnson, or more importantly, somebody like Michael Bloomberg is is upset about it. And so, look, I, I absolutely love Nina Turner, uh, and she is a fantastic surrogate, and she's 100% right. Just call it what it is. We live in an oligarchy, and that's exactly what Bernie Sanders is trying to solve. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron patreon.com slash TYT nation that goes a long way to help us keep the lights on and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media